We want to start with that oil price. Uh, we've got oil and backwardation. We've got ExxonMobil seeing tightness in this market for another three to five years. Uh, how much longer do you see oil having this $100 handle? Look, I, I can see it there for, for the foreseeable future, really. Um, you know, the issues in the, in the market are, are quite uh, are structural, you know, obviously um, driven by, you know, the Russian-Ukraine uh, war. But, uh, you know, we've seen a lack of investment across the industry for some time now. And I know um, the industry has, has, has talked about that um, and discussed that at, at great length. Um, and I think, you know, when you look towards the next few years, particularly as this energy transition um, accelerates. Um, you know, that capital is going to continue to push to, to renewable energies in particular and really starve fossil fuel markets. And I think, you know, for the oil market, that's something they're going to have to face up to because, um, you know, demand is, is holding up relatively well. Um, but, you know, the, the issues around supply are just so immense that, um, you know, not even, not even short-term um, you know, bumps in, in output from some key producers, I think, can stop the tightness at the moment. It doesn't look like there's any quick fix to that supply problem, but yeah. look at the demand picture as well. Is that a little bit cloudy? Because, you know, we have prices rising in the US. We've got China coming out of lockdown. Um, but again, the potential for further lockdowns exists. Can you tell us a little bit more about the competing pressures you see on the demands? Yeah, they're, they're quite immense at the moment. I mean, essentially the market is, is trying to, to cause some demand destruction because, you know, the supply issues are so great. So, um, you know, prices will continue to push higher, I think, until we start to see consumers really, you know, start to pull back. So, you know, we'll be watching um, traffic numbers through the US driving season in particular and, and the European uh, summer as well to see whether those high prices are, are impacting um, demand um, but obviously that could come when we start to see you know China re reopen and and you know the numbers so far suggest that even the uh, you know the small sort of uh, easing of, of lockdowns have started to, to boost demand um, so that could potentially you know offset some of those those uh, that, that fall in demand we would expect high prices to, to play um, in other developed markets Dan what about the demand being boosted from China and the real estate sector specifically because of course that has implications for base metals and iron ore specifically as well. Yeah look I mean the market got uh, quite hopeful that you know those initial um, lockdowns uh, were over but as, as we've seen you know the uh, uh, the renewed outbreaks have have really uh, stymied that enthusiasm, and, and that's a that's a real issue for uh, the market. Although, um, you know, when you look at I suppose you know where a lot of the uh, the manufacturing and construction is is taking place, it's it's largely outside of uh, a lot of the lockdowns. And I think uh, you know once uh, the supply chains uh, bottlenecks ease, you know we'll start to see raw materials uh, really make their way into uh, some of those key areas. And and I do think you know demand is is going to slowly. Uh, improve as a result of that but you know like we've seen in a lot of other uh, countries uh, you know after those uh, those you know large outbreaks and, and and the economy is reopened you know the snapback in, in demand can be quite uh, quite strong and so I, I expect to see that at some point um, in China as well although I think you know they still have a uh, you know a view on on not really overheating the market particularly the real estate market there in in China so I don't think you know, you're going to see a sustained sort of period of, of fiscal stimulus measures really boosting demand for you know multi years and Dan just really quickly what sort of idiosyncratic uh, stories are you watching especially risks surrounding perhaps some strikes in Chile when it comes to base metal space what are you watching well, I think you know when you look at the the overall inventory picture um, across both energy and metals, you know it's still you know quite low. And I think um, you know if we do see any sort of um, supply side uh, disruptions outside of you know what we're already occurred, then the markets uh, really doesn't have a buffer towards um, you know that that type of shock. So. Yeah, certainly those those labour issues I think are are certainly uh, front and centre, considering you know the. Um, uh, the wage growth that we're seeing in other uh, countries around the world. So um, South America in particular, you know, very strong uh, labour force, which will really drive, I suppose, demands for, for higher, um, higher wages there as well. So that's probably going to be an issue, you know, in up, upcoming sort of wage negotiations.